Hey, well, this is Derek, and this is part two of the 8.4 video. Um, so kind of a recap is what this next page in the notes is of all the stuff I just went over in, in the first part. So let me run through that one more time. Um, so kind of key features of the graph of rational equations, um, x and y intercepts. So to find x and y intercepts for x intercepts, we set the numerator to zero and solve for x. To find the y intercept, we let x equal zero and simplify. Um, so remember our numerator, we're going to have these rationals, p of x over q of x. So p of x equals 0, numerator equals 0 is going to be x-intercepts. Um, to find vertical asymptotes, we set the denominator to 0 and solve. And that's in lowest terms, um, so that's assuming there isn't a hole in the graph. Um, and they're usually in lowest terms. Uh, so again, numerator, x-intercepts, denominator, vertical asymptotes. Kind of once you figure out that that's what each of those things is doing, all of this becomes a lot less mysterious. Um, and then for our horizontal or obliques, um, if we have, that's our degree of our um, polynomial. So if it goes small over big, that's going to be y equals zero. If, it, if they're both the same, then that's where you do the ratio of the leading coefficients. And if it's big over small, we long divide to get the oblique. Um, and then we have some behavior in terms of the graphs. So our graphs are going to do some kind of crazy stuff with the asymptotes. So let me go through some of the features of things that we're going to see and how they relate to what we just did in the first video. Um, so we have these x-intercepts, right? And I have kind of two things that can happen at an x-intercept. We saw this with polynomials in general. We can have a crossing behavior. Um, at an x-intercept, or we can have a bounce or a touch behavior at an x-intercept. And the same way as we saw in the polynomial section, if, it, if your factor is raised to an even power, um, it's going to bounce. If your factor is raised to an odd power, it's going to cross. So again, this bouncing and crossing at x-intercepts, remember our x-intercepts are going to come from the numerator, so an even power would be in, indicative of, an, of, or a bounce would be indicative of an even power, a cross is indicative of an odd power. And then the vertical asymptotes, the denominator, that does the same thing. So remember way back, let me find... Uh, so if you remember back in the first video, we had our two parent functions, 1 over x, where our graph went opposite directions um, at the asymptote, and then 1 over x squared, where the graph went together, went in the same direction at the asymptotes. Um, so this is even powers, and this is odd powers, but it's going to be in the denominator is where we're looking for that. So if I have an looking at this graph and how these are going off together. They could also go negative together or positive. It just depends on the sign in front, but that they're going together. And so I think of it as so x squared. Um, so two, they're married. They're going off to infinity together. Here we have an x to the first. So one by themselves. So it's like they're divorced and they're going their separate ways. Um, so this is indicative of seeing some sort of factor in the denominator with a square, this is what we would see when it was to an odd power like the first or third. So let me show you a couple of matching problems. Um, so looking at this, we're given this graph or we're given this equation and then four graphs to figure out which one it is. So from the numerator, I know I'm going to have an x-intercept at x equals 3. And then from the denominator, I know I'm going to have vertical asymptotes at x equals, let's see, negative 1 and x equals uh, 4. So let's see where that gets us. Um, so vertical asymptote at negative 1, so that is a no. Vertical asymptote at negative 1, no. Uh, these two both have vertical asymptotes at, at negative 1, so that fits. Another one at four, that fits. X-intercept at three, doing good so far. So it's gotta be one of these two. And so the last thing we can figure out is um, the Y-intercept. So if I let X equal zero, I would have eight thirds times a negative three times one times negative four. So let's cancel the threes, let's cancel the negatives. And I end up with 8 over 4, which is 2. 
So I should have a y-intercept at two. And that looks to be this one. So that's the winner. Uh, much easier to do the matching than to draw these things yourself. But again, it's COVID, so this is what we got this quarter. Okay, similar question. Uh, so this time we're going to have, let's see, x-intercepts are going to be from the numerator. So you should see x-intercepts at negative 2 and positive 4. And I should have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 and 2. So let's start there. So that's not it. That could be it. Negative 1, that's not it. That could be it. So the two is going to fit on both of those, and the x-intercepts are two and f negative two four, negative two four. So I got to do the y-intercept. So if I let um, y equals zero, that's going to make all. Or sorry, if I let x equals zero, all these little x's will drop out, and I'll have y equals two times negative four over one times negative two. So again, double negative, so it's a positive. To cancel the twos, it looks like y should be four. So it makes that graph right there the one. Okay, and then our last topic is finding the equation of a rational function based on either given the features as a description or a graph. And then this box pretty much has these kind of same things I keep talking about. Zeros from the numerator are gonna be our x-intercepts, zeros in the denominator, that's gonna produce vertical asymptotes. And so now we're going to be given these and kind of working backwards on that. Um, and then the other thing that we have to do is find the stretch factor. And so in this case, we saw it when we did polynomials where we could use the zeros to get the powers, but then we would use, it was generally the y-intercept uh, to solve for that factor in, of a in front that determines how much it's been stretched or shrink. Okay, so for this first one, we're asked to write the equation of a rational function with vertical asymptotes here, x-intercepts here, and a y-intercept there. So what that would look like is we would say y equals, and we have that stretch factor of a. Um, our x-intercepts are our numerator, so we're going to have an x minus 3. If we have an uh, intercept of 3, we'll have an x plus 6 to accommodate that x of uh, negative 6. And then our denominator is our vertical asymptotes. So that's gonna, these are gonna just come over and make factors. So we'd have x minus two, and then bring in the four, x plus four. Um, so that's great, but we don't know the stretch factor yet. So that's where that y-intercept will come in. And I know when x is zero, y is six, so I can put that in and then solve for the a. So negative three and six, um, and this would make negative 2 and 4. So, um, let's see, negative and negative would make that a positive. And then up top we have 3 times 6 is 18. And downstairs we have over 8. Um, I could reduce, but I noticed that it's going to work nice with the 6 here in a second. So I think I'm just going to leave it as is and do 18, um, 8 eighteenths and then reduce it to six momentarily. And then that goes in three times, so that means eight thirds is A. And so then this I would write um, eight thirds. You could write all the single bar as well. And so that would be your, your final. Okay, this next one is too easy, it's hard. Um, so we're gonna have a rational function. Um, yeah. Okay, this next one is kind of too easy, it's hard. We're gonna have vertical asymptotes at um, x minus three and x plus three. Uh, x intercepts at one and negative two. So that makes it a minus one and a positive two, always opposite signs. And this time, instead of the y-intercept, they gave us the horizontal asymptote, which is actually awesome, because that means the stretch factor is five. Um, if you look at this, for to get a horizontal asymptote of five, I have to have five over one 
in reduce, you know, it could be 10 over two, but when I reduce that's still five over one, x squared, x squared, because our asymptote is gonna be the, the ratio of those leading coefficients. So it's five and we're done. Okay, so these last couple examples are really similar. It's just instead of giving a verbal description, we're given a, a graph. So from here, we can see we're going to have an x-intercept at 0. So that would be, let's set this up, y equals a. And that x-intercept at 0 means that would be an x. I know that x is to the first because it's crossing. Likewise, we're going to have another x-intercept at 2. So that's going to be a factor of x uh, minus 2. And then I am going to have an asymptote at negative 1. So that makes a factor of positive one. And we have another one at four, which makes a factor of negative four. I know these are both to the first. And for these graphs, we are assuming either first or second power. Um, and I know these are to the first because this one's going this way, that one's going that way. Same thing here, that they're going in opposite directions tells me that these are all odd. And that these are crossing tells me these are all odd. And then um, with this, it's great because they gave me right here that the, the horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 1. So that just means instead of a, I'm just going to scratch out my a and write negative 1, or you could simply just put a minus sign there, and then that's that would be it. Okay, and then this last one, we're going to have y equals a. Looks like we are crossing at 1, so that means I have a factor of x minus 1, again, to the first. And then um, negative 3, so x plus 3 and positive two, so x minus two. Again, this is up, this is down, so they're opposite. And same here, up and down, opposite. So I know these are both to the first power. And this time I do have that zero negative two there, so I can use that to find my stretch factor. So negative two equals um, a times negative one, and then three and negative two. So do that. Negative 2 equals a over 6. Multiply the 6 up, and it looks like a is negative 12. So our final here is y equals negative 12, x minus 1, x plus 3, and x minus 2.